Well, welcome neighbors and friends to my kitchen table. It has been too long since we've been together. I'm John, your whiskey neighbor. Today I want to talk to you about uh, a staple, uh, a benchmark in scotch. This is uh, Glenfiddich, their 12-year-old single malt. Thanks for staying with me through the break. Uh, as I said in the quick intro, um, I I actually wanted to work through uh, some bottles that I have on hand. Uh, all of us go through a patch where maybe we can't be seeking after those those really unique, uh, hard to find expressions. And I have a number of bottles um, open and some that I could open yet that are in this kind of core uh, accessible, available range. And that actually speaks to where I started this channel almost two years ago, about a year and a half ago now. And, and, uh, back then I was really, uh, talking about whiskey that anybody could get a hold of. And, uh, I still try to do that. It's probably why I shoot a lot of Canadian. I'm in Canada. Um, but I thought I should do a short series on kind of that entrance level scotch that, uh, pretty much anywhere in the world you can get. You can try and you might like, you might not like, but uh, I thought I should really do that. And and uh, right away my thoughts came to uh, Glenfiddich. You know, um, Glenfiddich obviously is super recognizable right in their, uh, their three-sided bottle. Um, and I'm pretty sure just about any bar that has scotch has Glenfiddich on the shelf. So this is nothing new hopefully to any of you, but maybe if you have it in your shelf, haven't had it in a while, pour a little dram and sip along and see if you get what I get. But I also started this uh, short series of available bottles um, with Glenfiddich on purpose. Uh, and the reason is I used to use Glenmorangie 10 as sort of my bench. Um, and, and lately uh, I have been going to the Glenfiddich 12, pour a little sip of that and then and then have a sip of a different scotch and so i'm using this in my own kind of whiskey journey to 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 level or stabilize my palate i don't really know if that's a thing uh obviously i'm not a pro i'm just a person who really enjoys whiskey and really likes talking about it um but i find if i don't do that and i'm just going from memory um, my palate drifts and that's fine. Palates change and drift and really it's about what you're experiencing um, in the moment. But, uh, but I, I want to use this at least in the next few scotches that I'm going to taste with you guys as sort of a, okay, this is, this is where Glenfiddich tastes and then how does this next 12 year old or 10 year old, you know, kind of that entrance core range bottle place. A lot of intro and not a lot about the whiskey. If you just turned in for Glenfiddich, you know this is uh, aged 12 years. Uh, it's a single malt, so uh, it's only from Glenfiddich Distillery, and they do um, all of their uh, distilling and bottling and cooperage on their own uh, on their own distillery site. I think they're in Dufton. Um, they are they are a space side, so they could say on here space side. They don't. They could say on your Highland, because Speyside's like a sub-region. Well, it's its own region, but it's surrounded by, by Highland. They don't say that either. It's kind of interesting that they don't mention that. Anyways, uh, it's bottled only at 40%. Uh, it's, it's, you know, likely uh, chill filtered. I'm, I'm positive it is. It doesn't say, but I'm sure it is. Um, I don't know if it's colored. Somebody in Europe where they have to say whether it's colored or not, let me know if Glenfiddich is colored. I don't, you know, unless I know a bottle is unchill filtered and definitely not colored, then I, then I look at the color and I think, oh, look at the cast influence. Otherwise, I just assume they've made it look how they want. Um, I don't know if it says on here, I was trying to see, but I know that this one has spent some time mostly in ex-American, like ex-bourbon barrels, uh, but there is a little bit of ex-sherry in here. Um... Uniquely married in oak tons for beautiful balanced nose. No, it doesn't really say. Um, but I, I, in the research, uh, there's a little bit of sherry in here, sherry influence, uh, and uh, lots of ex-bourbon. Let's see how it smells, or what its nose gives us, and how it tastes. On the nose, um, 
I, I get uh, kind of a, a, a crisp orchard fruit right away. Maybe it's a pear. Maybe it's an apple. I think the fruit evolves a bit, gets a little bit of citrus going on in there. But staying, staying with that chopped up mixed kind of orchard fruits. I don't really get a lot of spice on the nose. Almost a little bit of wood, which is kind of neat. Or, or I'm going to say must, but that sounds really bad. What I mean is, uh, it's, you know, it's not just totally fresh and lively fruit with a little bit of citrus. There is fruit and citrus, but then there's an edge of something. But it's not quite spicy enough to say, oh, spice. It's just, well, like cooked or aged fruits, maybe, right? That little edge. But, but decent, nice, uh, not particularly engaging, not particularly layered. A little bit sour. But, but okay, definitely if someone poured it to you, you'd know right away you're drinking a scotch. And, and probably if you've had a few scotches, I don't mean in the night, I mean over in your experience, uh, you'd probably think, think Highlander Space Side. A little bit of floral, lots of that... Uh, Kind of fresh fruit, a little bit of citrus. Yeah, the nose is maybe what you'd expect. Let's have a taste. Yeah, the taste uh, takes off from the nose. You're gonna get um, uh, some nice sweetness, a little bit of honey, a little bit of vanilla. Um, I actually find that it, it coats okay in the mouth. And as I let it kind of settle around the tongue, if you keep it in long like that, I get out a little bit of butterscotch or a little bit of, um, you know, some, some cooked sugars. And then the wood, the wood comes near the end. It's a bit of a drying, but a bit of stringent. Um, the finish is really not very long. It goes away, but it goes away clean. And it goes away in a way that... Um, is enjoyable. It doesn't, you know, burn and, 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 and gnarl or anything like that. It's, it's reasonably clean, finishes nice. Right from start, although there's a little bit of sourness or a little bit of musk, uh, must, not musk, musty or something, something almost old woody in the nose. Through from the kind of yeah, a little bit of caramel or butterscotch influenced fruit and gentle spice on the edge, but very low, low spice. It's there, but it's not, you're not going to get it right away. Um, you know, this is uh, kind of what my, my, my introduction really set it up to be. Um, this scotch is enjoyable um, and it's, it's so available. I think if you've never had it, get a bottle. Uh, you, you won't pay too much for it, and then you'll have a reference point in your in your journey or in your library. Um, in terms of you know complexity, it's not terribly complex. In terms of of any one bold flavor standing out, like oh, this one's really a, a sherry bomb. No, it's not. Is this one really an oaky hug? No, it's not really. This one's spicy. No, no, it's not that either. So it doesn't. But it's not trying to be right. I would say this is a very balanced. Speyside Scotch, which is what it's trying to be. In fact, I would argue that this, and this is why it's changing to my reference bottle, at least for the next few bottles of core ranges that I want to talk about, I would say this almost defines a Speyside Scotch. Um, you know, they were first out, oh, I should read it in case you just tuned in for that. So if you're looking for a lighter, enjoyable scotch, no, it's a scotch. If you're a bourbon drinker, this actually wouldn't be the first scotch I'd try. I think it'd be put off by the, there's something about the wood quality or the, or the, the sour malty nature of scotch that I know have thrown some hardcore bourbon people that I've had over that really haven't tried much scotch and I'll give them this kind of scotch. They're like, ah, they like it, but they don't love it. So I'd have other scotches for you. Um, but if you're just looking for, you know, what's the difference between scotch and bourbon or what's the difference between scotch and Canadian or scotch and Irish? You know, I would I would say this is a great 
uh, example of a Speyside Scotch. It's, uh, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. It doesn't excite me, but I enjoy it. So um, I'm glad to keep a bottle of this around. You know, uh, I think in 1960, I'm not going to get the date right, but in the 60s, uh, Glenn Fittick was definitely uh, one of the first, if not the first, to really mass market or really promote their single malt. And I think uh, they they can stand proud that they really turned the industry from blends. Yeah, there are some great things going on in blends, but I think at the time, everybody, well, not everybody, but so many people were drinking blends. And they came out and said, no, you want to try our single malts. And, uh, and I think they're right. So this is not uh, an amazing scotch, but you know, in Canada, it sits on the shelf at $45. And that's great. Uh, you'll pay more for less. And, and I, you know, I got this on a sale. It goes on sale probably every... Well, maybe twice a year. I got it for 34 bucks, and at $34, it should always be on your shelf. Like, it's a must-buy at $34. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else I can say about it. I haven't been to the distillery. When I go over to Scotland, I'd love to go. Um, I really don't know much about the history, except for that, in, you know, in the 60s, that really promoting the single malt scotch, uh, and that they do all their own work, that kind of thing. So, I don't have much left to share. But I wanted to start this series because I've got a few bottles uh, and, and it's going to be a little while before I can go chase some pretty unique expressions. And I thought, well, for those that want to know, uh, this is a, a nice Speyside 12-year-old scotch. Not that exciting in any one dimension, but maybe because of that, it's well put together and, uh, and, and enjoyable. It kind of defines uh, Speyside scotch. I've said that too many times. Guys, thanks for coming and watching this short review. I uh, hope you guys have uh, a great day. And hopefully I can get out a few more reviews a little more regularly. I'm, I'm really honestly struggling to find the time. But but I'm, I'm trying because I really enjoy the conversation. You guys take care.